Shalom. Kohlo Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. The bondage to the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered, hopefully elect, that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird. You know, that are scattered among the heathen. To the aqua that are listening and learning. To you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. I'm going to open with scripture. This is uh, 2 Ezra 6 and uh, 27. And it reads, For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. And as for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And the truth is being declared in the earth. The vibration of the truth is moving through the earth, and it's and that's what's causing, and it's causing a. Uh, uh, the curse is to fall upon Edom. And uh, this controversy of Zion. This argue, this fight, this debate over who the Israelites are. Which should make all you people in all these other religions think. All right. They didn't put the Nation of Islam on TV. They didn't put the five percenters on TV. They put in, didn't put Kemet on TV. What are they? They are not. They don't have campaigns coming against Kemet. They don't have campaigns coming against Islam. The campaigns are coming against the Israelites because that's the one thing that they don't want you to be, which exactly, which is exactly who and what you are. And I'm talking about so-called Negroes in America, so-called Native Americans. And the so-called Latinos, because you got people out here that are still pushing that uh, uh, that black only doctrine. Which, number one, there's no such thing as black people. Number two, the uh, there's actually more more biblical evidence that the natives fit the curses and uh, and the historical. Uh, proof of the relics that was found among them it was more found among the natives than it was among the negroes so called and it wasn't until the men of the great millstone brought that out because you know we were the main people on the internet they brought all that evidence out you know but that you know but you know what that's another lesson for another time i don't want to go off into that because that's what that wasn't what this lesson was to be about so let me get back on course Basically, this lesson is just to prove that Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, talking about the so-called Negroes, uh, were, in, were in Rome, were in Greece. So when they show you all these, these movies up to date, you notice that they're putting more and more colored people, so-called, in these movies, even in the Renaissance period. And, and then, as a matter of fact, the book that's lying down uh, renders the evidence of that. But what they're trying to do is control the narrative. You see, because clearly destroying the nose off this statue couldn't hide this so-called Negroid feature. So, um, so what they did was they, when they write into the book, as you read it, let me just read some of it. It says, it is quite clear that the classical word came to know blacks by the way of the Nile Valley. The evidence set forth in the preceding chapters is abundant proof of this. And and this is them trying to control the narrative. All right. We cannot, however, reject the the, the prior prior Punic, later uh, uh, Roman, uh, uh, later Roman Africa may have had a direct knowledge of the uh, of the uh, Africa may have had a direct knowledge of the black world knowledge, which is in, of course, time could have spread throughout the Roman Empire. For this reason, it seems appropriate to devote the special study of representation of black in the art of ancient North Africa 
after evaluating as far as possible the likelihood of the contact between the Lipko Punic and later the, the, the Lipko Roman world and the world of blacks. All right. So we read in the, in the last, I, I don't know if it was in the last one or the one before, actually, it was probably the one before that. Um, I read the definition of, of ham from the uh, Young's Dictionary Bible. And there is a separation between the dark races, which are really brown, different shades of brown. As you can see, the images of the men on the book, uh, they're brown. Their skin is not black. No one's skin is black. All right. That shadow in the picture in front of you is black at the bottom. No one's skin is that color. People are different shades of brown and people are different shades of red. So all they're trying to do here is they're trying to they're trying to make these black people the so-called black people that are in this Roman and Greek society at this time, that this book reveals the images of their presence. So they can't deny that. But what they're trying to do is make them African. But let's go to the Bible. All right. Because what we're telling you is that that, that was the uh, and not to say that there weren't some Africans there. All right. But the Bible clearly lets you know that the men of the Lord, uh, were men of color, mostly dark brown. All right. This is Acts uh, 13 and 1. So we're talking about Jews here. Judah, Benjamin and Levi, which the Romans ignorantly called the Jews because they couldn't they couldn't this, you know, they couldn't discern the difference between a Levite, between a Benjamite and between a Judite. So they referred to them all as Jews because it was the kingdom of Judah. So they just shortened it up. You know, and that's where that term Jew comes from. Jew is just a byword out of out of Judah. All right. But this is Acts 13 and one. And it reads. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas. And Simeon, that was called nigger. And Lucius of Cyrene. And Manam, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. All right. So the disciples, the men of the Lord, were referred to as nigger. And and actually, I've done this before. This is more more so for for uh, was well, a review for the people who who know this truth, and then for you new watchers, you know. That you may uh, learn. So I'm going to grab this dictionary behind me. This is the uh, the Winston Simplified Dictionary Encyclopedic Edition 1933. Going to bring it into the frame. Call this Exhibit B. All right. The Winston Simplified Dictionary Encyclopedic Edition 1933. All right. And we're going to look up the word nigga. And I'm going to read it through. The camp through through the camera lens so that so that all may see. And so that you can see the phonetic phonetic spelling and pronunciation of the word nigger. All right. And the different spellings of it and how it, it's the it's the very word that's in the Bible, because people will say Niger or Niger and it's not. It's actually pronounced nigger. And we'll, I'm about to prove it. All right. Let's uh, bring that into focus. All right, let's read it through the camera. It says, nigger, N-I-G-G-E-R. N -N -N, well, look at the pronunciation, N-I-G-E-R. Same as in the Bible, all right? It says, uh, a Negro, dark-skinned one. A Negro, now usually a contemptuous or vulgar term, any dark skinned persons prevailing among, prevailing among or characteristic of American Negroes. All right. So it says now it's a vulgar term because it wasn't a vulgar term in, in times past. It was just simply uh, uh, it was just simply a description. Someone who was dark skinned. So that you knew that it was talking about someone who was really who was really dark, who was brown. 
All right, not light brown, tan, or you know, light skin, yellow, which all those are derivatives of brown, but dark brown, like the images you see before you. That's straight out the Bible and that's straight out of uh, uh, the dictionary. Hence the reason why this definition is no longer in dictionary modern day. So, you know, the new books have all been revised and revised are just basically lies. When they revise a book, that's because they're trying to hide uh, uh, information. All right. So I'm going to uh, turn the page. All right. And show you something. Because what, what brought this on? I was planning on doing this anyway. But I was watching. Uh, I was on Netflix and, you know, looking for something to watch. And I started watching old episodes of Spartacus. And uh, got to the portion of the gladiators and. And even in Spartacus, the majority of the gladiators and the Roman soldiers, you know, were Edomites. Well, what you're looking at right here before your face is a mosaic of gladiatorial game, games, games. And let's see if I can, uh, if you can see them right there at the top. Those are all Negroes. Every one of them. The ones that are being given unto the beast that are chained up and the ones that are fighting the beast and the ones that are in the, the middle. All right. There's a larger image of this uh, further back in the book. But those are all so-called Negroes in the arenas, the same way that is so-called Negroes in the arenas today. All right. Because what would sports be here in America without the presence of the American Negro, so-called, which is the Hebrew Israelites? So when you watch that movie, uh, Gladiator, you know, when we tell you that the Negroes rose up and took over Rome, that is exactly what's happened. Because not only were they the gladiators, but they were also the citizens and citizen soldiers like Cornelius. And in the midst of all this, the Israelites woke up to their heritage. All right. We can go into the history of Nero and how he uh, set up and burned down and did terrorist type attacks against Rome and against his own people. And then blamed it on the very said people that are on the, you know, that you're looking at right now. He blamed it on them. He tried to make them the reason for it. And there's nothing new under the sun, as, as King Solomon said. All right. There is nothing uh, new under the sun at, at whatsoever. But let's get a scripture as to why and what was going on at that time. Because they in that book on the prior prior page, they tried to say that, uh, you know, the Negroes migrated into North Africa. No, they, they look when I was watching that, uh, uh, that Spartacus, one of the places where they were taking place was Cappadocia. That's also a place where a lot of the Jews were and that they were returning to. And that was in, in, in that, and you know, the island of Crete. That was actually a Asia Minor. And now they, they claim it as because uh, that's just above Syria and, and Iraq. All right. And um, that was called Asia Minor. It wasn't called Europe as it's kind of looked at as being Europe today. It wasn't called that, that portion of land there, that land mass where it's set. You know, but um, let's get a scripture. Um, in Acts, I believe it's Acts 18 and 1, if I'm not mistaken. Because you're looking at you're looking at Jews, man. All right. Yeah, this is Acts. Uh, 18 and 1, and it said, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came unto Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila. So he had a Greek name, and they were going back and forth from Greek cities. All right? Born of Pontus, lately come from Italy, and his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came un un unto them. And then when you look into the history behind that, uh, Claudius. Claudius had all the Jews removed from Rome because of aggressive street teaching. What were they teaching? They were teaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
All right. And, and by teaching the, the kingdom of heaven that is at hand, what that meant was they were telling that people who were all Hellenized, like we're looking at the ones here, to come back to the law, statutes and commandments, to come back to the Bible, to come back to our way of life, to come back to our heritage. Same thing that's, that's going on now. And now what are they doing? The powers that be, just like Claudius, are slowly but surely um, fabricating information and a campaign against us simply for preaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's what it is. Okay. So. This lesson could just go on and on and on, but I'm not going to stretch it out because there's other more images in this book that I'm just going to go into and continue to do these strategic um, hits like this. This is a uh, guerrilla warfare, guerrilla, guerrilla, guerrilla tactics with the with the scriptures hitting all the points which uh, that, that Esau Edom has lied about to prove that he's a liar. And to prove that he is not a Jew, he is not an Israelite, and that they are indeed Edomidumia. Who, uh, uh, matter of fact, let's get that scripture closed with that. Because that's this is where we are now. Because, you know, in Jeremiah, it says that the Israelites would um, be discontinued from the heritage. And that another people would claim it. And, and, um, and that Idumia would, would, would uh, assign the land of uh, Israel into their own hands. And uh, believe this. Let's see, Isaiah 35, or maybe it's Ezekiel. Mm. Yes, it's Ezekiel 36 and 5, and it, and it reads. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, surely in the fire of my jealousy, I have spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. This is a future prophecy which has come to pass. And it says, which have appointed my land into their possession. Who's in the land of Israel? Idumians. The Bible said the Idumians would appoint the land of Israel into their hands. All right. And with all the joy of, uh, uh, of their heart and despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So Israel was casted out for a prey. And now the Idumians have appointed it into their, in their hands. And then their prophecy goes further in Joel. It tells you that they would part the land. And it is parted. It's parted between Ishmael and Edom. And, and neither one of them belong there. So with that, you know, we give all praises going on unto Yahweh Bashan Abishai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Wa Ababa Ball, Shalom.